We're going to start the mole concept and mole calculations, Chapter 7. This is a really easy chapter. Don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. You've already learned dimensional analysis. Now all you have to do is apply it to the concept of the mole. A mole is simply a collection of particles. It happens to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Again, when you say a dozen, you know that means 12. When you say a mole, you now know it means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. These particles can be anything. They could be cars, people, but typically they are incredibly small objects like atoms, molecules, ions, or electrons. Because if you have more, then 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of a particle, unless that particle is incredibly small, you simply will not be able to have that large a number of them. So again, just remember that a mole is simply an amount of substance. To give you an idea of the size of this number, if all 5 billion people on Earth were to do nothing but count the atoms in one mole of an element 24 hours a day, one atom per second, it would take all 5 billion people 4 million years to count the atoms in one mole of an element. Likewise, one mole of marbles would be enough marbles to cover the entire Earth to a depth of 50 miles. So when you're talking about a mole of objects, those objects need to be incredibly small or you simply would have an unreasonable amount of them. If you have a mole of water molecules, which would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water, that would have um, the number of water molecules in only 18 grams or 18 milliliters of water. So once you're down to the size of a water molecule, then you can have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of these particles and have a reasonable amount. So as far as your conversion factors are concerned right now, you're dealing only with the mole being equivalent to 6.02, 2 times 10 to the 23rd particles, which we call Avogadro's number. Don't confuse a mole with the particle that you're actually measuring. You can have moles of atoms, if you're talking about nitrogen. You can have moles of molecules. You can have moles of more complex molecules, or moles of ions, or for ionic compounds, moles of formula units. No matter what the particle type is, if you have one mole of this, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of these things. The mole is the number. The particle type is separate from that. At this point, you simply want to be able to work simple problems that allow you to convert moles of a substance to the number of particles, those particles being atoms, molecules, or ions. The only conversion factor that allows you to move from moles of substance to particles is Avogadro's number. So in converting from moles to particles or particles to moles, that is your conversion factor. Looking at this example problem, calculate the number of atoms of sodium in 0.34 moles of sodium. Starting with moles of sodium, you simply use the conversion factor so that moles would cancel, as well as sodium. So you've got moles of sodium canceling, leaving you with your conversion factor. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and there's your final answer. The other type of problem you can encounter is converting atoms back to moles. In this case, you use the same exact conversion factor. You simply flip it so that atoms of sodium would cancel, leaving you with the unit of moles of sodium. So when you're dealing with converting atoms to moles or moles to atoms, you're still using the same conversion factor, 6.022, times 10 to the 23rd. The next level of problem is to be able to look within a molecule and figure out the number of atoms that are present in that formula. If you look at this molecule, you can see that the carbon atoms, okay, this 5 
would be multiplying everything within the parentheses. So you've got five carbon atoms. You've got five times four, or 20 hydrogen atoms three nitrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. You will see how this is going to come into play when you do more complex problems that force you to find the actual atoms within a molecule. So again, simply looking at the formula and distributing the number throughout the parentheses, five carbon atoms, five times four, or 20 hydrogen atoms. That would give you three nitrogen atoms, and, of course, six oxygen atoms in one molecule. You can also look at this formula in terms of one mole of molecules. If you had one mole of molecules, your ratio of atoms stays the same as it did in one molecule. But now, instead of saying you have five carbon atoms, you have five moles of carbon atoms, 20 moles of hydrogen atoms, three moles of nitrogen atoms, and six moles of oxygen atoms. Using the periodic table, you can find the mass of one mole of any element or compound. When you look at the periodic table, the average atomic mass of an element, when expressed in the unit grams, is the mass of one mole of that substance. So if you were looking at the mass of one individual atom, then indeed the average atomic mass on the periodic table is the atomic mass unit. But if you simply change that unit to grams, you have the mass of one mole. Looking at these samples, they all contain one mole of the particular element. One mole of sulfur, one mole of magnesium, one mole of tin, one mole of silicon, one mole of copper. Even though they all contain one mole, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, obviously they don't contain the same mass of element. Each element has a unique average atomic mass. So while you have the same number of particles, they do not have the same molar mass. The molar mass of an element or compound is the mass of one mole of that substance. To find the molar mass, you simply use the periodic table and add up all of the average atomic masses. For example, the molar mass of water would be two moles of hydrogen atoms in the formula times the average atomic mass of one mole of hydrogen gives you 2.016 grams of hydrogen, one mole of water in the formula, times 16 grams in one mole, and then adding these up will give you the molar mass of water. The molar mass allows you then to convert moles of substance to mass of substance. This is the next part of your problem solving technique. Using the molar mass, which you get from the periodic table, you're now able to convert moles of a substance to mass of a substance, or mass back to moles. Let's look at an example problem. Calculate the number of moles in 26 grams of sodium hydroxide. Starting with your 26 grams of sodium hydroxide, the only conversion factor that you can use is that in 40 grams, which is the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, to get 40 grams, looking on the periodic table for sodium, which would be 23 grams, oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1. Adding those up gives you 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, which is equivalent to 1 mole. This conversion factor allows you then to convert grams of sodium hydroxide to moles of sodium hydroxide. You then, of course, can use the reverse of that same conversion factor. If given moles of sodium hydroxide, you simply use the same conversion factor, this time setting it up so that your moles cancels, leaving you with grams of sodium hydroxide. Once you have that part of the puzzle, you then are able to convert mass to moles and to number of molecules, or number of molecules to moles and mass. And going from mass 
to number of atoms or molecules, you must go through the central mole unit. But the links are the same. Going from mass to moles is still the molar mass, which you get from the periodic table. Going from moles of substance to atoms or molecules is still Avogadro's number. So here's an example problem going through both conversion factors. We want the number of grams of sodium present in 3 times 10 to the 18 atoms of sodium. And here we have the molar mass for sodium, which was acquired from the periodic table. Taking the atoms of sodium, we set up our conversion factor first to convert atoms to moles. Once we get to the mole, we then can use the molar mass to convert moles to grams. So we have gone from moles of substance, or excuse me, particles of substance to moles of substance to grams of that substance. That path is always the same. If we were going from grams to number of atoms, we want the number of atoms in 160 grams of sodium. Again, the molar mass of sodium remaining the same. Take the grams. First, we would use the molar mass to get to moles. So you can see your grams of sodium have canceled. Once at moles of sodium, you can use Avogadro's number, one mole, is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And now you have the number of atoms of sodium in 160 grams of sodium. A more advanced problem would ask you to find the number of atoms in a particular formula. So this problem gives you the formula for Prozac, and it asks you how many atoms of carbon there are in 0 .003 grams of Prozac, Prozac being this entire formula here. So if we look at the setup, it's going to be very much the same. First, find your molar mass of the compound by adding up 17 carbon atoms, 18 hydrogen atoms, and so on. Starting with your 0 .003 grams, convert the compound to moles using the molar mass. Once you've done that, use the conversion factor of moles to Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, to get the molecules of Prozac. Then, looking at the chemical formula, you can see that one Prozac molecule contains 17 atoms of carbon. So your final conversion factor says one molecule is 17 atoms, and the problem is solved. This is about as complicated as it gets with these types of problems. Once you practice enough of them, you will realize that the road map, or the mole map, so to speak, is always the same. Mass of substance to moles of substance always uses the molar mass. And moles of substance to number of particles, being atoms or molecules, always uses Avogadro's number. Practice will certainly make you an expert at this type of problem solving.